Hello guys, today is a beautiful sunny Saturday in Mexico City and we are going to explore one of the most beautiful architecture sites in Mexico City. So let's roll! on Insurgentes Avenue which is the longest avenue in Mexico City if I remember correct the length of this avenue is 28 kilometers which is like 20 something miles that crosses the city from north to south all right let's go And we are almost there. So here on the right side, there is the famous Olympic Stadium with the mural of Diego Riviera. And there were Olympic Games here in 1968, if I'm correct. Oh, look, there are like a lot of bikers in this area. Nice. Oh. Okay, so the road I wanted to take is actually closed, I believe. Or maybe that's the road. Yeah, I think that's the right one. I already can see there are going to be a lot of people there, which is nice, I would say. Okay, there are these guys that are parking people, which basically they say they are watching for your car. But of course, if something happens, no one is reliable for that. So basically, these guys are just illegally collecting money for no good reason, I would say. So here we are. This is a campus of National Autonomous University in Mexico, which is located in south of Mexico City. I'll explain a little bit later why it has the word autonomous in its name. So this university is the biggest university in Latin America. And for tourists, it's known due to the famous O'Gormans and Diego Rivera's murals. But I find this campus very interesting because it's modernist architecture that dates back 70 years. This campus is huge and I'm very excited to explore all the open courtyards, hidden walkways, architectural details, murals and pavilions. Campus buildings have a little bit of everything, bold geometry, abstract minimalist form and local materials. This campus was recognized as UNESCO World Heritage Site in 2007. So let's go and explore it. When you enter the campus, the first building you're gonna see is the Rectory Tower. This building was designed by architects Mario Pani, Enrique Del Moral and Salvador Ortega Flores, who basically designed most of the buildings here. As you can see, the composition of this building is the classic composition of modernist building, when you have a huge horizontal object and then the vertical dominant in this space. Let's go closer and look at this building. As we can see here on the stairs and this dividing wall, the black lava material is dominant here. But when we look at the building, we see the yellow onyx, which is actually transparent stone. So all the sunlights get inside the building. When we look a little bit down on the first floor, you see this black and white checker pattern. But actually behind this, there is a glass block. So this wall is also kind of transparent and gets the light through inside the building. On the side of the rector's building behind me, there is a big mural with a long name, where the name is The People to the University, the University to the People for a National Neo-Humanist Culture of Universal Depths, which was done by David Alfaro Siqueiros. Unfortunately, this mural right now is under reconstruction, so I cannot show you. They put some protection which has the print of the mural, but unfortunately doesn't show all the colors and beauty of it. On the other side of the building campus, there is a pop-up on the tower itself, which actually has a big mural done by Diego Riviera. I believe that probably this is an auditorium, because otherwise I cannot explain this huge rectangular form 
sticking out of the building full of windows. Rector's Tower has another small mural above the side entrance. So here you can see the pen with a pencil writing important dates of Mexican history into the book. The first date is 1520, when Cortes conquered Aztec Empire. The next one is 1810, War for Independence from Spain. 1857 is the Proclamation of Constitution of Mexico. 1910, Mexican Revolution happened. And the last one is 19 question mark question mark which was intentionally left, suggesting that there were going to be another important date in the Mexican history in the future. At the beginning of the video, I said that I will explain you why there is a word autonomous in the name of the university. But first, I have to mention that actually studying here is for free, and it was always for free. So all the brightest minds around the country can actually study here. And this is a very important part. So, let's go back to autonomous. It's autonomous because it's truly autonomous. This little university city is the city inside the Mexico City. They have their own security slash police, they have their own fire department, they have their own post office. So it's made intentionally to be independent from the political views and everything what is happening in the Mexico City itself. So when we come back to this mural, when at the end it says 19 question mark question mark. So they recently restored it, and before, the students put there the mark 1999. So in 1999, there were big protests here, because the rectory decided that they have actually to start charging people to study here, and students were against that. They recently renovated, and they took this date away. But you know, right now it's 2000, so I believe they have to put it back, because if that had to happen in 19s, it actually had to happen there. So that's a little story about this morale and the word autonomous in the name of the university. Let's keep going. The most striking building on this campus is the Central Library. Library has morales on all four facades, which depict different times in Mexican history and importance of the university. The murals were created by architect and painter Juan Gorman, who worked with the architects of these buildings, Gustavo Maria Savadera and Juan Martinez de Velasco. O'Gorman wanted for the murals to live their long life and bring the messages through the generations, so the idea of painting was not suitable. He went all around the country looking for the colorful stones for the mosaic. And all these thousands of colored tiles were brought from all over the country, and each of the color is the true color of the stone. Each wall of each facade represents the different historic focus. North wall, which is on the other side, shows the pre-Hispanic past. The south wall that we can see here is the colony past. East wall on that side is the contemporary world. On the west wall on that side, the university and modern Mexico. The outer foundation walls, which are made out of the black lava rock, depicts the god Tlaloc, the god of rain and fertility in the ancient religion. There is also a hidden representation of Tlaloc that is visible when the building is viewed frontally from the south from a little of the distance. You see these two big circles? The circle of the left is actually the view of the earth by Ptolemeo, which is written underneath, who believed that the earth is in the center and the sun and moon are orbiting around us. The other circle on the right is representation of the views of Copernic, who believed that the sun is in the center and that we are circling around the moon. So from the distance, these two circles actually are eyes of the god Lalok. The murals itself are very detailed, and I don't know all of it, of course, but we can see a lot of cosmic symbols that are on this side. We see at the middle the double-headed eagle, which is the seal of the university. Underneath of it is the Catholic Church, which was very important of the colony period. Also, there is a map of Mexico City on the right, under the Copernic views. And also next to it is the picture of Copernic arriving to Mexico. Oh, this mural is very complicated and really huge. I wish I would know all of the details to tell you about.
Behind me is the east wall that represents the contemporary Mexico. I mean contemporary for 1950s when it was done. So you can see at that time in the center of this mural there is the atom that represents the beliefs of the nuclear future of the world. And again in the top of that we have the cosmic symbols of the moon and sun, we have the eagle in the middle, we have the workers, factory, the people from the village, some revolution there. They are very, very detailed. They have a lot of meaning behind that. I wish I would find a very good book or something to read one day about this because they are so unbelievably cool. Let's go to the North Wall and see the mural of the pre-Hispanic past. This is the back entrance to the library, but let's look on the right side here. We can see the fountain with a reflective pool that again represents the god Tlaloc. So we can see that there was a fountain here because there are the white stains from the water which were coming from his hands and from his mouth. If you look above here, this is a huge mural that tells us of the pre-Hispanic past of Mexico. You can see this blue line, they're actually channels because when Aztec came to this land, there was a big lake where the Mexico City is right now. So they built channels, they were growing food, they were floating in their small boats and actually living that way before Cortez came. They didn't figure out the channels and they dried it up and they built this city, which was kind of like a solid land. But before it was not like this. Also some part of that represents the neighborhood Xochimilco, which right now stays as the original true pre-Hispanic neighborhood, which has channels and those small boats, which you can take and ride around to enjoy your time on the weekend. Actually, I really highly recommend to do that if you're in Mexico. The last wall that I want to show you is the West Wall. That represents the humanitarian mission of this university. It also tells about the Olympic Games that took place in Mexico. But unfortunately, you cannot see through the trees. And I'll just like put the image here so you can see what it is. It's really beautiful. All of them kind of take the whole image of the Mexico from the past till nowadays, basically till the time it was built. And I think it's really one of the most beautiful buildings on the campus. But let's explore more. I'm pretty sure you're gonna love the architecture I'm gonna show you. Here you can see the building of the architectural school. But there is postgraduate architectural school that looks even better than this one. To show you how huge is the campus, let me show you this map. So we are here. This is the huge Olympic Stadium. This is the part of the campus where I plan to walk around and show you all of the buildings. This is the whole central campus. And this central campus is just a small part of the whole university town. When I'm walking to the other side of this huge lawn where I want to show you the postgraduate architecture school building, I notice a very cool building on the side here. This full height glass thin metal structure, yellow accent behind the stairs, the where you can actually go on the roof. Wow, that's amazing. While walking through this lawn, I noticed these big concrete spheres, where at first I saw there is some kind of ventilation system and there is something underneath this lawn, maybe some parking or some laboratories or something. But actually later I found one that showed me that there is some kind of lighting inside. Most of them are already abandoned and they are not in use, but they look very cool. And I think when they were actually shooting lights up on like this trees here or just on the lawn itself, it was probably really beautiful. And this is the building of postgraduate architecture school. Wow, I love this wave. It's so modernistic, looks very good.
it feels like it's gonna start raining soon one of parts of the sky is really really dark and i hope i have another like 20 or 30 minutes that i can show you a couple of more murals and just how beautiful are the buildings and the space around this campus. Behind me there is a mural which is called The Conquest of Energy by Jose Chavez Morado. This mural is a symbolic interpretation of humankind's struggle for survival and triumph for discovery of fire, which later becomes the atom, the nuclear atom. The colors are amazing on this one. I really like the use of these glass bricks in the wall here. You can see that on the left side there is a staircase that always gets the natural light. Amazing. Unfortunately, I didn't find any information about this art, but looks pretty cool as well. Check this out. The periodic system of elements on the facade of the buildings. Probably the students put themselves there on the windows. Unfortunately, the huge mural that I wanted to show you is actually not visible here. You can see only the covered wall where is a reconstruction of the mural that's called Life, Death, Metastas and the Four Elements, which was done by Francisco Epensko and Guerra. I hope maybe soon they will finish that and we will be able to see that. I can hear a thunder and feel the huge raindrops falling from the sky, but I hope I have a couple of more minutes to tell you about this pavilion because this is a very, very important moment in the architecture and construction. The double curved structure is made of the very thin layer of concrete, exemplifying its structural and design capabilities. Measuring 40 feet by 35 feet, this structure contains two laboratory spaces above, specializing in measuring of cosmic rays and nuclear disintegration. At its thickest point, the covering reaches only 5 eighths of an inch, one of the thinnest casts ever created. Its construction in 1851 marked one of the major advances in concrete shell architecture. And on the other side of this pavilion there is another mural which is probably going to be the last for today. As I'm walking back to my motorcycle in this slight rain, I hope you like this video. Unfortunately, I was not able to cover the whole campus. It's humongous. You probably need to spend a weekend here to actually see everything. But I tried to show you the most exciting part, to show you this architecture, the spaces, the murals. Please let me know if you like this video. Please comment, like, subscribe. I would really appreciate that. Thank you and to the next one. Oh my god, I walked for a long time forward and I have to run back in the rain. This is crazy. And then I have to ride motorcycle in this rain. Whoa!